G'day guys, Jason here from the Utter Farm. I don't know if you can see me, I'm waving my hands, but I just want to give an update on this gully erosion video that we did, oh, probably be good 80 months ago now. People were asking us how the gully erosion go. Now, as you can see, I'm struggling to get through all the growth. So obviously it's not going too bad. I'll come up where you can see me on this camera and I'll explain what we've done here. Ugh, can't stand in there. So this is where we've had that gully erosion. It was pretty bad if you go back. I think we've done two videos on it. We had that headwood erosion up the front at the gully head and was coming down. Then we had sidewall erosion. The sidewall was collapsing. We ended up putting 25 round bales of mulch hay in here and it filled it up to my head height. It was almost oh, maybe two foot below than the erosion. And we're hoping that would put the seed down on the ground, which clearly it has. I've got millet. I've got a lot of Rhodes grass. There's Serrazzo going through here. So we've got the germination of all those seeds from the bale. But what we we're hoping to do was from those bales, have it rot into the ground. But three months after we put them in, we had massive floods. And what happened with those floods, it actually washed three quarters of that mulch out. Because it was up, the flood come all the way up here. The flood would have been probably my chest height. There's a fence behind the camera there. It's probably 12 foot away. It just touched the bottom of that fence. So it actually floated all that hay and sent it down the creek. So we lost, I'd say, three quarters of the hay. But there's a few round bales and hay left in the bottom. But it did what I actually wanted to, drop that seed bank. And as you can see, there's a lot of germination. So previously, if you go back to the original video, the growth through here, the vegetation was very sporadic. So it was easy for the water to come over the gully head and wash out and just keep running down that hill with velocity and washing out, causing channel corrosion and undermining the banks, which would then collapse. This growth now, it's hitting the ground, running through, but all this growth, to get through is slowing the velocity. The water isn't consistently going straight down. It's hitting the roots of these plants and diverting, which slows the flow. I noticed in the bottom there, when I started the video, a lot of the mulch is gone now because we've had that much rain. We've had 30, 36 inches is our annual rainfall. We've had 30 inches over the last six months. This month alone, we've had nine and a half inches of rain. So approximately we've had a third of our rainfall in a four week period. So I was a little bit worried and I thought there's probably the prime time to give this update. Even though the mulch is gone, this vegetation is what I wanted. And it's actually working great. Right there, if I part the grass, is a tire. Where I location that was, is I positioned it right on the head cut where the head would erosion. And I left that four inches to six inches off the head cut so at the moment it's still got roughly that still that six inches remaining around this side it's probably three inches so i reckon we may have lost two or three inches from that head cut since that last lot of big rain but prior to that when it was raining i've done a couple of videos now you could see it pouring over and the soil was collapsing so it's definitely slowing the flow which is then stops the soil erosion in this head cut you might be thinking to yourself, where I put that tyre has got nothing to do with the amount of wash it's going to get on that gully head where we put those bales. But where I'm standing has. So to stop that headwood erosion, I've had to work on the ground above the erosion. Because obviously, from where the shed is there in the background behind me, the water flows down here and this is where it picks up velocity. If you go to the first erosion video we did, where I'm standing now, on the video, you can actually see bare soil and there was probably a quarter of an inch, if not half an inch cracks on the ground, which shows that this ground has been continually grazed and was very compact and drying out. And there's no permeability or allowing the soil to take water. Since that video was done 18 months ago, I've probably had four or five bales of hay rolled out and had the livestock graze, bale graze on the ground, that hay, so they've trampled that carbon into the ground and I specifically put it probably 60 foot directly in front of where we're having that gully erosion and that gully head. 
So all the way up to the shed has now had carbon lay down. Not only that, this grass high now is two foot high. We've had the cows through here and they've been chewing and laying this grass down. So there's the additional carbon on the ground. Because they've been chewing through here, they've been eating that plant, causing that root, the root extradates to go down in that plant. And it's been pushing that root extradates into the ground, then forcing that plant to stress out and it pushes the roots further into the ground. So now beforehand it was that dry, it was that compact, you, the, the root system would hit a hard spot in the ground and couldn't get any deeper and that's why the grass wasn't growing. We've also slashed this, I'd say it'd have to be six or eight times over the last two years. So that's adding the additional thatch on the ground. So this is a prime example here. If I spread this grass without the puppies want to pat, oh, you can see the hay below there. So that's that thatch layer I'm talking about. It's rotted down a fair bit. It's probably only half an inch thick now and there's mud underneath. A lot of that mud would be previous hay I've rolled out, bales, and also the thatch, which is decaying, decaying into the ground. So what that does for me now, like I mentioned, it was bare dirt there before with cracks in it. The water would hit that and then run off. Because it was that hard, it had a crust on it, the water couldn't penetrate and it was running straight down the hill and causing that headwood erosion. Now, as you can see there, with this amount of grass and that much thatch, the water actually hits it and slows the velocity down. So what you're trying to do is slow the velocity running down this hill to stop it. That way, it, it alleviates that waterfall and headwood erosion over the top, which then creates the issue with the erosion. Because it's slowed down, we've had copious amounts of rain, like I said, 36 inches and 10 over the last month. And I've only lost probably two inches in front of that tire. Previously, I was losing slabs, say a foot, when this was rock hard. So I knew I had to work above the erosion to slow the flow, to stop the erosion in the gully itself. Clearly it's working. We'll go over now and I'll talk about how I need to remediate it moving forward. So the plan is now moving forward to make a permanent repair on this gully erosion. As you can see, we run our six strand timeless high tensile electric fence over the top of this gully. You'll be able to see a timeless post on your side of the gully in front of the camera and a timeless post there. They're temporarily, temporarily in the ground. So what I plan doing is I've obviously, I'm gonna to have to strip all that wire out eventually. Then what we need to do is batter down these edges at a 45 degree angle all the way around, then roll hay out on the ground, which then that seed and germination, it'll be hay, but also we're gonna put budget seed mix all the way through on top of the soil before the mulch goes over top. Then we get rain on top of that and then it'll germinate because we've got it at a 45 degree angle and it's mulched, it's protecting it from compaction and also it won't create velocity. It'll seep through that mulch hay onto the bare soil, which underneath and the seeds germinate and slowly run down the hill. When that germinates and takes, then we can allow the cattle in there to slowly graze it you need that animal impact on the ground. It needs to, the cattle need to chew that plant, break it off with the tongue. You need that tugging motion on the plant to excite the root extradates, which push the root extradates into the ground, get the microbes, the microbe bring the nutrients back to that plant, which then creates that plant to grow back and also pushes the root system further in the ground. But in the interim, we still want to have more carbon laid down on the ground. We're not at the point where we want to cut that bank yet. We want to slow the velocity down more. So once this fence system's up, we're just going to run our single poly braid right around this corrosion area, area of erosion, I should say, and we're going to keep grazing the cattle around here. I'd say probably 12 months after they've laid that carbon down, once we do start cell grazing, we're not ready yet, then we'll come in with the excavator, excavate this out, and then we're going to run the timeless posts through the gully system. At the moment, that's open, and that's why we need that single poly braid to stop the cattle getting down in there and just crawling straight out from under the fence. Even though that's my property, I want them to graze that, sell graze and not go in and continue graze across the whole property. All in all, I think it's been a success. It didn't go to plan, we wanted that more mulch in there, but you can only do, you can only work with mother nature. Even though it ripped that mulch out, we still got a solid seed bank in here. All this grass wasn't here. I can still see bits of bare soil there that all the mulch has decayed away. We realise it's not going to stop at 100% until we cut that bank in. 
but primarily we need to work on the ground around it and that is why this erosion started in the first place because of compaction and overgrazing of this property regenerative farming where you're cell grazing laying carbon down letting the grass grow back to its full height and then come and lay it over again is the only way to get that carbon laid on the ground it's the only way you can get that thatch layer on the ground to armor it to stop the velocity to stop compaction to stop the overflow of water racing down that hill so it's working on the land around it and then in here where the vegetation what does get down is slowed down by the vegetation in that ground so any more questions guys on this by all means leave your comments after the video and we can do some additional videos on it or photos if you want more information but i think it's been a success but on that have a good morning have a great afternoon and a terrific evening guys wherever you're watching this from and we'll catch you later